Welcome everyone, this is Planet News, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Harry Adwin. Hi hi and Sanswinda. Hello. And this week the people over at Standing Stone Games were over in Indy for Gen Con, so therefore it was a light news week. At least in the case of what was being posted over at the site. But we do, of course, have our usual Lotro beacon, which completely refuses to load. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, at the top well, is a graphic from uh, Frostbluff. Yep. Ah, here we are. Yes, that is Lots from Frostbluff. Lots of dancing rich people. Dance- yeah, dancing rich people who are begging to have their pockets picked up, I guess. Definitely, and totally are distracted. Yeah. And for our community spotlight, we have a video of a performance by the On Dune Ensemble that was performed on July 29th. And Fibro Jedi has a new episode of his Warren series. Ooh, yeah, that I should make a note of that because <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see that one yet. Uh, it's an hour. It's fifty minutes long. No wonder I didn't have a chance to see it yet. And we have episode seventy-four dot one of the Adventures of Eladon's Outriders, and that is the and that is a pl- blog. And then in our kin hall, the Kindred Spirits is a casual rank ten kinship recruiting on Arkenstone that prides itself in doing a little bit of everything in the game in a relaxed setting. They are a social, active, helpful kin who enjoy instances, big battles, and light raiding. They have a kin island with crafting stations and ingredients. Crates and all are welcome. If you're looking for a community of people to game with, please apply on their site. They are always looking for players to share in the enjoyment of the game. They have a brand new website, and they do use Discord. So here is our weekly comment. What did Barliman Butterbur say to the drunk hobbit? Get off the table? Well, I suppose that is appropriate, seeing that things have created quite a ruckus with people on the tables on occasions. Uh, I guess it's better than him saying one drink drives out another. <laughs> anything for you, Sans? Well, I was thinking, like, beware the crockery. Like, be careful, don't break anything. <laughs> Please, have a seat calmly. Calmly, yes. <laughs> and we have, of course, several videos in our fan site news. Gamolio Dan visits the Bruin and Gorges in episode 124 of his Let's Play series. The road goes ever on with the gravity as it starts up on the lay of Rust and Rhyme. And Druid's Fire for Gondor has no druids as she continues on the Book of Mordor and easily lost with McVigan plants. Pants <laughs> as they quest in Os Rimon and Corey Olson in the adventure intensive adventures in Middle Earth. In the lore intensive adventures that that would be the lore hall thing. Is that the Oh no 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 that's the regular Actually no, that's probably the regular thing, his weekly Friday thing. Now this Friday's episode was a little strange in its timing because he was doing finishing off a season and the Sumerillion film project. And so therefore he started his episode actually an hour late. He I think that's the latest he ever arrived to his stream. But since Drew's fire was at Gen Con, he was able to run late <laughs> since there was no one after him this week. 
But I guess that will be up next week. All right. In the news, we have some release notes for 22.4.1. We discussed that last week, I believe. Yes. And, of course, Vacation in Frostbluff is active until August 7th, so you don't have much time left if you're listening to this after we post it at our site. And Joego has this week's screenshot of the week, which looks like a little place in Dunland. Yeah, it's another one of those uh, panoramic shots. Yeah, it's a very... Yeah, it is a quite a massive panoramic shot over at over at Dunland, so you could have a look at that. And I think that's the Gap of Rohan, though. Is that the Gap of Rohan? I think it's the uh, I think it's the Rohan side of the Gap of Rohan. Hmm. But looking into the Dunlin side, it looks like. Yeah, so it's it's taken from the Rohan side and looking all over Dunland. That's definitely a Dunlanding architecture over on that. On yeah, yeah. A couple of those hills. Yeah, yeah. It's basing. But Dunland, yeah, I think it's I think yeah. it's the Rohan side of the Gap of Rohan looking through the gap into Dunland. Okay, that's why you've got the Tower of Orthanc up there. No, that's not Orthanc. That's one of the ruins. Yeah. All right, we'll have to go and see if we could determine the exact site at some point in the future. Meanwhile, let's head into our store sales. And Terry Adwin, what's on sale this week? Um, well, the weekly coupon gets you a universal solvent times one with coupon code universal now through August 9th. And 25% off riding stuff. Select war steeds, riding skills, select mounts. And movement speed buffs. Movement speed buffs, really? Is that like the 10% run speed boost you can get from the store that I never use because I usually run with a hunter? (laughs) It's pretty handy if you don't have a hunter around, though. And you want to go faster. Well, I find the 10% speed boost ones handy when I'm questing with a high elf. But I mean, I'm not the high elf. I have high elves in the party and I'm trying to keep up with them. Yeah. Right. Um, this is, I, I actually did track the tweet. Uh, it is Rohan. It's the West March of Rohan overlooking the southern border of Dunland. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's looking through the gap of Rohan into Dunland. Basically. Very pretty. There you go. And let's head into our site news. And we'll begin with an article by Squirrel. Talking about skirmishes of Middle Earth, a system review. Pineleaf's favorite subject. Yes. And he is writing the first of five articles on the skirmish system. Right now, he is giving a history and an overview of skirmishes. So, talking about that, and he's talking about doing things like tearing up responsibly. And talking about apparently at one point, he and another person decided, let's go for a million marks. Prime Leaf's reaction to this is probably amateur. Only a million? Well, maintaining a million mark, maintaining a million marks is the tough thing. Is having a million marks at one time, which is the tougher bit on the matter, because, all right, because especially back in the early days, you're probably also spending a lot of marks. And it did take me quite a bit of time before I saw a million marks up on the screen saying, you currently have one million marks. 
<laughs> Was that your Does it goal, actually Pine give Leaves? you a message? Like, mm-hmm. did you have a side goal of a million marks or anything ever? Last year, I had a goal to have a million earned marks within skirmishes, which is a different thing than having a million marks. Do you actually get a message when you have a million marks that says you have a million marks? No, you don't. And the reason why I know that is because I actually got to the point of going past. Let's see. I believe it was last week. That's right. It was on Tuesday. So this last week, I opened up a Hobbit present. And I got the double Mark 1 where you get the... So it's the second tier Mark 1 where you get 1,200, 1,200 marks in there. And... After that, I need, I decided I was going to run Thievery and Mischief. And when I was in the early parts of it, I was looking at Titan Bar. And I suddenly noticed there are, why are there seven digits now in my marks total? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I hit a million marks and I didn't even know it. So I think Squirrel beat me to the punch on that one. And then they're talking about current status of skirmishes. And actually, he does sort of, you know, talking how they're not doing anything with the skirmish system. That's half true. because Yeah, I was thinking because they just did the summer mm-hmm. one. Yeah, you do have the summer picnic. And that, yeah, and the summer picnic was, and that's, that's why I said half there because it's, it's not exactly a skirmish because there are differences from it, but it had, but it was definitely used the skirmish engine when they were building that thing. Because you had encounters. Right. And you had those banners that you would take in order to go to the next step. And, of course, you had mobs that you need to kill. And, of course, they were scalable. So a lot of things in common with it. The thing that was different was that the mobs were the mobs were always the same that you faced. So it was more like a regular instance in that way. So that is Squirrel's Bun. He will have four more articles on this. The next when it says skirmishes of Bree and Ranger, so that means I presume that means the two Bree ones probably, and also probably attack at dawn is a Ranger one, and uh, we have to see what he considers to be Ranger. Then we get, then we have other skirmishes in Area Door. Then we have skirmishes of the underground, which of course would be the ones that were in Moria. And then Mirkwood. So we'll see those when they come up. And any more comments on that before we head on? Then let's have a look at the Antipodean writer who has the second of a series of wallpapers. A few months back, he had this enlargement of the one ring poem and then later on he put out stanza one onto a wallpaper so today he posted a wallpaper that includes the second stanza seven rings for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone To build seven realms, each above dwarf hordes of gold, till the dragons came, lusting for wealth alone, till Sauron resolves the dwarf kings would now be sold, and their rings reclaimed in where shadows lie. That's quite the awesome graphic that goes with that. Yeah, very definitely dwarf halls. (laughs) When dwarves build, they 
you sometimes wonder how do they build this underground? <laughs> Engineering feats that will boggle the imagination. Right, Stance, do you have a new player question this week? Um, I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually, I do. Sorry, I was getting my new player question. Um, <laughs> what are what good are titles on LIs, and are there any places in Middle Earth where they are particularly important? Titles on LIs. To me, the first thing I think on LIs and titles are the ones that, for weapons grant change the damage type of it because a a legendary item when you get first get it does common damage and of course common damage isn't exactly the best damage under cir- circumstances so to me the most important thing on titles is to be able to get non-common damage onto your weapon. And where are they important? Well, Sarnir is one place. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're resistant to everything except, what, light and ancient dwarf? Yeah. Y- yeah. Because I noticed that light oils and having a minstrel around seemed to fix it as well, but... Yeah, that also helps. And if I could remember that, then my warden could remember to throw some light oils onto my javelins. <laughs> but of course, if you're a high enough level, it, the whole thing becomes moot. But if you're going into Sarnir right after getting your long, right after getting your legendary item, then you might only be 46, 47 if you went in there to get it early. Then you decided, let's not go into Moria yet. Let's go back. Let's go to Sarnir and get that goat so that when we go back to Moria, we can ride around on a goat. And one of the things you get during the quest rewards for that series is a choice of a title, either Westerness or Ancient Dwarf. So if you plan to go into Sarnir, obviously you take Ancient Dwarf. As for other places where they're important. Wait, so different titles will give you different damage types, right? Yeah, not yeah. all. Not all the titles do. For example, the titles that are available at the skirmish camp just give you a bonus to damage against one particular creature type. And I think it's the lowest tier of them. So therefore, the titles at skirmish camps are <clears throat> questionable in utility, in my opinion. <laughs> But the ones that give particular type of damage usually have some sort of some sort of usefulness in there, and you can get them from the. For example, if you're in Moria, in addition to the starter quest, you'd also get them from the quests that require you to turn in those garnets and those other gem shards in Dolphin View. Oh right, right across from the stable master. Yeah, right across from the Stable Master. And each of the three tiers has one of those types. I believe the... I forget which one is which, but one of the two quests that are at each level has an option for a reward that gives you a type of damage. One of them is... So therefore, one of them will give you Ancient Dwarf. One of them will give you Westerness. Now, for the third tier, the level 60, which is Valerian, what you have to do, though, is not the one that's in Dovin View, but the one that's over in Echadunan, which is the small fellowship one. So if you want Valerian, you have to be in a group in order to grab that one. And... 
in higher level places. I'm guessing there are other places like Snowborn and oh. Dol Amroth and maybe other places. Oh, oh yeah, yes, yeah, all sorts of places. Yeah, usually area has its own way of getting such things. And in fact, Dol Amroth, I think, is still one of the best places to get it because that was Amroth is a level 100 area and. So therefore, there are a lot of things that haven't been up in allies, I think, since then, because they're, you know, they have a lot about the relics and the like, but I don't think, have they been giving new titles in Stole Amroth? I haven't seen any, but there might be some. I said there might be some, but. Um, and what but about usually, titles for class items? Uh,. I have to admit, I know less about those because Warden. Since Warden's I know less for... about those too because Hunter. But yeah, yeah, yes, Hunters and Wards. Those are the two classes that don't care about class. Terry Adwin. Um, the class titles for class items will um give you some sort of boost to um kind of stat of your choice so you can have a boost to tactical mitigation or physical mitigation. Um, I don't remember what some of the other ones are, but I know that the different titles do things. Yeah. I don't pay a lot of attention to allies. I think we've talked about this on a couple different lots of occasions because, um, yeah, I, I had enough trouble getting allies for one character. Um, I kind of really don't pay tons of attention to the other ones. Makes sense. Yeah, we're not exactly the most diligent group when it comes to going after legendary items. I mean, I am the one who ran a challenge character to 100 with no LI, so. Fair enough. And it looks like tier three uh, allies are still the best that you can get. Um. Yeah. So usually when you get to the higher level ones, because at, at the beginning, all they give, all you get on the item is the damage type um, for the weapons. You You might get just damage type or you might get some sort of bonus to it but you don't get both of them then starting later on then they have okay a damage type plus this damage type plus this so in Dole Amroth I think it's uh, often it's a damage type plus this tier 3 as you noted right and there are some from like the Pelinor rewards vendor um, so you could get the agility of Elder Days 3 but it gives you a plus 47 agility and sets your damage type to Balerian, so I'm not sure that's actually much better than the ones you would get in Dilemma. I mean, you could pay... Um... 15 Ancient Ithil Coins. Or you could spend 6 of those Ancient Ithil Coins on an Amphilus Starlet Crystal, and you could get 2 Amphilus Starlet Crystals, so... <laughs> Or you could use them as the clicky purposes to increase your reps so that you can spend them later um, on a pretty, pretty pony. That too. There is that. So I have a feeling that you can't get the Starlet Crystals until you have a high enough rep where it doesn't matter if you click on them. Mm-hmm. All right, did we answer your question sufficiently? I believe so. All right, then let's head into our weekend Lotro and Terry Adwin. What were you up to? Well, uh, Terry Adwin got to revisit Dees before taking a track to find out the, that the elves have been busy renaming things again. Because <laughs> they can't just, you know, they're in Middle Earth for like millions of hundreds of years and Apparently, their way of passing the time is every five minutes, let's rename the same thing to confuse people so that 
Somebody comes up and says, oh, I want to go to, to Dol Guldur. Well, that's fine, but we call it something else now. <laughs> really? Really? What was wrong with the name it had before? Just say Ruins of Dol Guldur. Um, we also took a tour to discover just how good a job they did destroying Dol Guldur. And I got to tell you, Galadriel did a much better job destroying, taking down the, that fortress than the volcano did at Barad Dor. There's there's way less of it left. Um All and right. then <laughs> and then Axley Shingshing chased down some stolen sweets and tried not to not to think too hard about the whole thing about the stolen sweets because I was okay, so I was explaining my quest this quest to my mother. Um <laughs> You go to Frost Bluff and they tell you that they decided to ask an eagle to take these treats. Who thought this was a good idea? I don't know, Mom. Okay, <laughs> so there's a hole in the sack. Go figure. And they the sweets fall out, as happens when you have holes in things. And she was flying through all of the, the cold regions to keep them fresh. Okay, sure. But then the monsters snatched them up, and you have to go recover them from the monsters. And here's where it, you really just don't want to think about it. Because A, either the monsters have eaten them, and you're digging them out of the remains, or <laughs> B, they're just like monsters don't have pockets. So how exactly are they carrying these sweets around? And do you really want to give them back to the kitties after this? <laughs> no, no, you really don't. Not if you think about it at that. So, so yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah. Um, it's, too it's, often. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. Just, just don't think about it. Just don't, don't go there. Um, that, that goes right up there with half trolls. Um, and then he wandered around in Frost Bluff being an awesome dwarf in Frost Bluff. And then my area lore master, Galabrella, completed the first of the Markwood skirmishes. Yay! A little <laughs> bit closer, a little bit closer to finishing volume two and actually getting to where she can do content closer to her level. But, um, the Dogodur skirmish, uh, the Danning lore skirmish, Let's see, I was talking about Dolgador earlier and I got confused. <laughs> um, the Daninglore skirmish, which is typically one of my favorite skirmishes to do, she managed to get all of the most annoying enemies that you can get. She got all those little flaming lights and the other little glowy balls of light, and those are super annoying, especially because the flaming ones aren't really susceptible to fire. And you know what damage a lore master does? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then she wandered around looking for dwarves, although she didn't actually do too much wandering because I managed to find both of the dwarves on my first try for each dwarf, which means that I've really done that way too many times because I haven't done it recently and I still knew right where those dwarves were. <clears throat> so, Sans, how was your week? Well, my week was pretty good. Um, I managed to gain two trait points on my Aryad mini. Um, because Cinders helped me with the Pillar Gear epic battle that I kept failing because the twins kept getting themselves killed. Um, yeah. it went so much better with the second person. This business, like, okay, so I, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but a few weeks ago I was like, yeah, epic battles are kind of a lot of fun. Like, once you start to get the hang of it and you've got points and... Then my poor Arya Mini, who has the two trait points from the points, but none of the points to show for it. Um, had to do epic battles to finish the epic quests so that she could get epic things like trait points and, you know. <laughs> um, and starting over again from scratch was just painful. Painful, painful, painful. I managed to make it through, um, a Helm's Deep skirmish by pretty much just standing there and hoping nothing <laughs> got through That's, because that was about all I could do. Kind um, of how you do Helm Steve. You just kind of stand there and let it happen. Well, yeah. And I mean, you can't move anything. You can't do anything. You just, you're like, yep, I'm totally useful here, guys. Let me run around <laughs> and pretend that I can, you know, how about I just randomly heal random people and tell captains? Yeah, you, you heal. Oh, now I can't tell anybody this for like three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. I don't know. A long time. And so, yeah, it was, it was bad. And I got, I got 
something like three whole points to spend out of that. And I was like, this is going nowhere. Um, and I tried Polar Gear again and, uh, nope. Three points wasn't enough to be helpful. Um, but getting a second person was enough to be helpful, even though she also didn't have any points, um, because it was her first epic battle. And I did not realize it was her first epic battle. Um, I'm like, yeah, let's do Polar Gear. And she's like, okay, now walk me through this, because I've never done... I was like, oh, maybe this wasn't the best one to start with. But it went really well. Um, and she did an awesome job, and we got a couple of Platinums. So we both got points to spend, and um, definitely went better with people. And I've still got two more to do before I get through the um, Volume 4 epic, but... At least, at least I got past the first one, so that was good. And on Thursday night, I found Stolen Sweets, as Terry mentioned, and I had more visions of Karazgar, which was not something that I set out to do. But <laughs> apparently, dwarves, doubt, elves, and, uh, what would it be, Maiar? Um, and yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, I got to go back to evil places and see more evil visions because dwarves couldn't believe higher powers. Um, and then I ran a lot of dailies, a lot, a lot, a lot of dailies, four characters through the Minas Tirith dailies every day. I'm so sick of dailies. I'm so sick of <laughs> Minas Tirith. I am so sick of Amphilus Scrolls of Empowerment. I still need like a mm. hundred more, hundred fit. I don't know. Too many more. It's probably closer to 150 still. I don't want to think about it. I'm... Oh. Anyway. My Aryan Mini has some more things, and I sent her deeding to blow off some steam. Um, And so she slew many, many, many things to gain more virtues. I'm not sure I as a person gained any more virtues, though I probably lost a few. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> finally, how was your week? I'll begin with my lore master who helped to save a dwarf that was being threatened by Uruks charging up his mountain. Then I found a note on a dead Gondorian. <laughs> and out of curiosity, I was trying to figure out, because I've always been wondering about how this person died and all this stuff. And I finally went back to the dev dev diary for this particular quest series. And it turned out that in there, in the dev diary, it actually says who killed the Gondorian. Oh, and, and it also answered that, answer the question why I'm always having this thing. Is this guy legit or is he faking it or whatever? And of course the reason for it is because they were changed. That was evolving as they were doing. Apparently originally the whole thing was a ruse and then later on they decided that no, there was really a real Gondorian. And and, and then, who killed the Gondorian? Gonane. Oh. Do we learn that anywhere besides the dev? Diary? I don't think anywhere else that's mentioned because I would have thought I would have run into it if if it were mentioned anywhere in the storyline anywhere. But I don't recall hearing about who killed it because, well, who would have revealed it later on? We investigated the murder and we determined that he was killed by a woman of no name. <laughs> right, you'd have to run into her somewhere or find something of hers or something like that. I th- I would have thought that would have been pretty memorable. Yeah, I would have thought that was pretty memorable. And usually we're thinking of other things whenever we run into her. Though, of course, there have been one or two other quests where you get hints of her being around before they reveal that she's around, for example, when you're doing those quests for the rangers, I mean, for for the Falcon Clan, 
and the Rangers are all doing that stuff and you're going all over doing, and you have to, and you find those footprints. So therefore, oh, those are her footprints. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're. I, I don't know if they were Nona's footprints. Oh, I've, I believe Nona wears boots. Right? Doesn't she? Well, so does Gun Ein. No, Gun Ein is barefoot, I thought. Uh, reasons to run stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> reasons to try to pay attention as you run stuff again. I, I always just assumed that they were known as footprints. I don't know. Gunain has Cause, sandals on. Yeah, because we're tracking um, Nona through Dunlin 2 until we actually run into her again. So I've always assumed that, that they were just known as uh, boot prints. I guess I'll have to... Well, I'm getting closer to going into Dunlin and doing the quest in there, so I have to recheck the footprints, see what's, what their characteristic are. I think it's because I never thought of Nona as having small feet. She's a woman. I always figured they were hobbit She's or not dwarf a big or something because they were small. What? She's not a, Nona's not a big person. She's actually a yeah. fairly small woman. I guess I'm just going to have to, yeah, compare them all that stuff. Okay. So, therefore, it looks like that. I actually cur- think that Nona is, I mean, like, my head canon is that Nona is smaller than um, Gun Ein. Okay. Well, I'm obviously going to have to com- compare them and see who has, who's wearing what on their feet and stuff like that. And We could also look for more dumb diaries. And seeing See if how anybody answered it, yeah. And also seeing how that I am currently in La Nuke, that I could, I certainly will be able to check to see what what Nona is wearing there. And therefore, after that little one, which has opened up a new can of worms in the entire matter. <laughs> We have my quick hollow burglar who started questing in Moria because I had opened up Moria last last week. So now this week I went around actually questing there and doing the all the stuff in the threshold and getting all set up. I've gotten as far as the one where you do the Dur- Durn's vault. We're searching in there. But I haven't done the stuff with the Grevig yet. So that's sort of my next quest that I'll be doing in that area. So next week I should be doing Dolvin View. Then and during the field trip, we ran North Cotton Farms Quest. And then after that, I ran not one, but two burger quests. Because apparently I never got around to doing my level 25 quest. <laughs> And that level 25 quest is a lot easier when you are level 30. Because they have, because they really love to put in mobs that are about five levels higher than the minimum level for the quest. They, you have the normal mobs who are around the same level, and then you have these wandering or patrol mobs who are five levels above. And so therefore, but, but, but burglar, you shouldn't actually have to fight any of those mobs. Well, yes, but the, but if you are at level and they are five levels above you, then it, you have to be very careful or you're going to be spotted. No, their self detection is crap. Not if you're in yellow line. <laughs> and actually, no, I, I was in blue line on. Was that the blue line? No, no, that was yellow line. Yellow line burger. Yeah, I know that there is a line in there that's real that has those real nice bonuses to stealth, but yellow line doesn't get that. Uh, don't both of the other two lines have stealth bonus as like the first thing? Yeah, but when you are level thirty, spending ten of your points into the stealth into improving your stealth is a bit dodgy. Just- don't walk across them, like walk off to the side of the road. 
Well, yeah. that's what I'm doing. That's what you have to be careful of. And But if you're within about 10 meters of them, they will see you. And they do have choke points and stuff like that where you have to go through where their path is in order to get to where you're going. I have never, ever had an issue with that. Well, I had to be careful because there is, I did have to actually fight one of them because he, he saw me, maybe even two of them. The, the ones that were my, and now I'm not talking about the ones in the club, but I'm, now I'm talking about the ones in the level 30 quest since I had to do that one on level. So at least one of the 35s did see me, maybe two of them. And when I, I guess the 31s, when I had to, occasionally I did fight them to clear out the area a little bit to make it a little bit easier for me to get through. But I did get through. The real annoying thing about that one is, is remembering how to get to that sword in the second one. Because, oh boy, that's, I always get lost when I'm in that place and doing that quest. And the only thing where I get lost more is trying to find the Hobbit again afterwards. <laughs> because I always go out the wrong door and say, okay, where is she? Where is she? We currently have 20 supporters on Patreon. If you would like to join the illustrious rate of players and help support Lotro players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast your choice or be a guest with us for an episode of Lotro Players News. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter, the Players Alliance, at Players Ally, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Ariandes at Ariandes. Finally, Fit Pony Needles sends Winda as sends Winda, and Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has four shows every Monday day, 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News. Every Saturday day, 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have Lotro Players News. Every other Thursday at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have XP Quest. And on the first Tuesday of each month at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Chromatic Bits. You can join us for our live shows at lotoplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Pilot Mules reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>